<laughs> uh, my name is Pearl and I look after the fixed brand. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. And as we anniversary this uh, mental health uh, conversation, this is actually our fifth year of sixth year actually this year. And uh, this is part of Be The Change series. As a business, our focus is not just about slaying fashion, um, hottest grace, great look at a value price, but also about doing what is right. That means talking about these tough conversations, uh, like this one and situations that you, our customers, the influencers, um, entertainers, and just rather everyone at large uh, experience. This initiative, is about sharing the light on conversations and contribute in finding solutions. Tonight's discussion will focus on mental health, on what mental health is, um, what it means to be your authentic self, being perfectly imperfect in challenges we face in our daily lives. We hope this conversation helps in shining a light on finding solutions and providing platforms for help and if you have any questions, do throw them our way. IG is uh, live, so one will pick up those questions and we'll take those Q&As and actually have our panelists answering to, to them. Um, just to acknowledge uh, certain things and just to show that we are conscious as the fix. I'm trying to look. I haven't had a chance to actually do this. Oh, yes. Okay, so... Um, our buyers are inten intentionally conscious when we talk mental health and we talk about authenticity. Those aren't necessarily the things that we talk about, but also what we buy. So for this season in particular, there's been a certain selection that's been focused on um, conversations, uh, social matters that have been more topical like pride, and we are talking love, spread, spreading love, love is life. Um, mental health in its own as well. You will see if you do shop around, there will be a semicolon t-shirts. Those are all about uh, being conscious and, and uh, being present with your mind, being kind with your mind rather. Um, other people to acknowledge. I don't know if YFM people are here, but they've actually just helped us to sponsor, just to give awareness of this mental health. Um, so we just do need to have some lighthearted in the midst of things. Um, just also to thank our suppliers for all the help. Without you, it wouldn't have been feasible to do this while we are in Cape Town and you here. Thank you so much. Acknowledging the sound team, acknowledging our catering team, 
acknowledging our photographer, the panelist. Oh, you guys look amazing. I'm looking forward to what you are going to share tonight. Um, the customers, our, our guests, thank you. Thank you so much. We don't take this lightly. Um, so for those who are online and not able to join us, not able to join us, or anyone you think these conversations can be of help to them, just drop them a message to tune in on our online IG Live conversation. Just to keep up also with these conversations, please follow these hashtags. Hashtag be the change. Hashtag do what's right. And please make sure that you follow the fix on IG, on TikTok and on um, uh, Facebook. So I'm thinking just to sort of give a hype into the start of this, we've got um, some cute performance by our young guy here called a weaver, beautiful creative. He's just gonna get us into the program before we kick start. So just after after a weaver, Bobby, you will take over. Cool. How are you guys? How about talking? Am I talking alone? Hello, Mall of Africa, the fix. Ibatung, hello. Likai, Ibatung. Ah, that's much better. I'm quite the attention seeker. So if I'm on center stage and you're not giving me attention, I'm going to cry probably, okay? It's going to be a problem. But welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another episode, another installment of Mental Health Conversations with The Fix. We had one last year, and I can assure you that I, I learned some things that I apply in my everyday life. Um, but how do you feel about I, We learned some things last year, right? Yeah. Not only learning, but just growing as a human being. I think the conversation, I think the conversation was extremely pivotal, but one that needs to keep on going. So I'm so happy to be here with you back again, and I'm so happy to meet the rest of the panelists. Right. So I'm very lucky that my co-host over here just landed from Europe, by the way, girl. And if she's not catching flights, she is on the Afternoon Express show on 3. Or you can even find her on the home channel on DSTV channel 176, girl. Cover girl, you name it. I could go on forever if I had to, you know, break it down to the people. But welcome, this is Bali Tembe. Can we give her a round of applause? Thank you so much for having me, friend. Cool, cool, cool. Next to her, we have the first ever female president girl of Pearson, right? Yes, yes, and this was in 2017, right? Pearl Ntehi, guys, she has been Miss Mamlodi Sundance's um, second runner-up, and she made it to a national stage with being in the top 10 of Miss South Africa 2022. She didn't walk away with nothing, though. She walked away as the Play Your Part ambassador because of the wonderful work that she does with Project 31. Can we give Pearl Ntehi a round of applause? Because, wow, yeah. And not too far from her, we have Nia Brown. Nia, ha Nia has been in you know, the radio business since her days in Vits with um, Voice for Vits. But she's on YFM today with The Breakfast Show in the morning. And I'm a personal fan of the show, by the way. You know this. I told you about this before we started. But she's a voiceover artist. She's a, a, an actress. She is on radio. This is your girl. Give it up for Nia Brown, everyone. Guys, now, wow, wow, wow. I'm gonna need a bit more energy, again. Wow, Okay, cool, cool, cool. Otherwise, Nia Hasty, you well? Nia? Nina. Nina Hasty, sorry, girl. Otherwise, are you well? I'm making you pie. That's fair, that's fair. Are we gonna share the mic? Or? Okay, cool. But can I introduce you before everything, right? This is Nina. Um, Nina Hasty, sorry guys. Um, this is Nina Hasty. Nina is a very familiar face in the South African context. We see her on um, our t TV screen. Sorry guys, I'm a bit nervous, so you're gonna have to bear with me. Okay, no, no, no. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, can we give her a round of applause? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, you've been so impactful to the everyday South African. Your time um, during COVID and you using your voice to, you know, 
be sort of a light to people that may be struggling with mental health issues, you know. I feel like you understand where I am right now. You have affiliations with Netflix, Showmax, you are a writer, you are a voiceover artist, and a comedian, which is my favorite description about your job. Can you give it up for, for, for Nina? Yes. And just check, she just launched um, a YouTube channel yesterday and it's called Otherwise You Well, which is sort of the joke I snuck in there, but it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> and next year we have Ursula. Can I, can I just say to you, right, your achievements are on my vision board. She, she, she's a TEDx speaker, right? She is in academia. I want you to actually, in the conversation, tell us what you be up to, girl. Because I don't think I understand cardiovascular, medical, what, 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 what. But yeah. we'll touch on that a bit later. But she has her own podcast as well. She's a conversation curator. More, more understanding and more clarity on these sort of topics. You know where to find him. Um, he's Mr. Anello on all social media platforms. And he's quite helpful. And his therapy is for individuals, couples, groups, um, family. It's a whole roster. So do check that out. And yeah, guys, this is this is us. I, I think I'll introduce myself as well. I'm Babi. I'm the founder and CEO of an anti-gender-based violence organization called I Hear You. And we're here today because it is October, and October is Mental Health Awareness Month. And as part of the hashtag Do What's Right initiative by The Fix, we're here today to commemorate that awareness day. And you know, there's so many conversations surrounding mental health. What is it? What is it? When did we start even talking about this? What does it mean? What's the actual terminology? What are the misconceptions around this? You know. So today we're going to be unpacking a lot on whether it's substance use, whether it's male suicide, mental health in the work environment. We're going to try and touch a lot around this topic so that we can find as many tools as possible and apply them in our everyday lives. But without any further ado, we are going to start with the conversation. And um, I'm not sure if this, um, if I'm meant to be using this mic, I'm not sure if the sound team would want this back. Or if I can use it. Okay, so are we going to be passing this around? Okay, cool. Um, but the panel is audible. Okay, cool, there we go. So we're going to start the conversation, right? And I would want us to all be on common ground before anything. You know, we hear this term all around everywhere we go it's a very buzz like term in modern day right so i want to start us off with what really is mental health you know not textbook not bureaucratic you don't have to be a professional to answer this question but i would like to know from each panelist what what's your idea of mental health maybe we can start with you nina how old are you now there is a 26 year old woman who has made such an enormous impact on our society and I think that that's phenomenal and congratulations for putting this all together. Um, what is mental health? So I am 40. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. I need a round of applause for being white and looking this good at 40. Sorry. We don't have melanin. Um, <laughs> I have struggled with my mental health since I was in high school. Um, you know, in the 90s, in Pretoria, apparently we all went to the same high school. Um, where's the rest of the Willow Ridge crowd? It's very strange. Yeah, anyway, but I'm, I was there in the old days. Um, but what I realized was there weren't a lot of people, even though people were trying to help you with mental health, there, there was so much that was busy being learned about mental health. So just in terms of diagnosis itself, uh, I was misdiagnosed basically my entire life. They thought I was depressed, they thought I was anxious, they put me on medication for that, that medication made me suicidal, then they put me on something else, then they said I had um, anxiety, then they said I had depression, then they said I had bipolar, then they said I had borderline dis personality disorder, then they said I had bipolar, blah, 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 because tests weren't done on young women, so they didn't know what ADHD looked like in girls. That simple. It took 40 years for me to get onto the right medication and I'm finally medicated correctly and I've never been more effective, calmer, less anxious, less snappy, able to finish sentences and 
live in society without wanting to kill myself or other people. So it is phenomenal. So when, I, when we say mental health, is how are you functioning in society, dealing with your brain and in this space? And I have lots to share with you about that. I hope that answers your question. No, it does. Thanks so much for sharing. Do you guys have any more thoughts that you'd want to add on the question? What really is mental health? Is it, are we doing a round loop of that? I actually want to give a congratulations to all the elder people that I see in the store. Can we give them a round of applause? So we see it on social media. People are always joking around, black adults, when they hear you've got depression. I get about that safe space. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but you're here and you're saying, I want to hear and I want to learn and I want to understand what this mental health thing is. So you know what? Jokes on those people that are jo making jokes about you. And I really appreciate it. As soon as I saw each elderly person walking in, I said, thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. Thank you so much for trying to tap into this because we're also learning. We're with you on this journey. But when you stand here with us, it says, guys, we're together. You know, as, as Nina was explaining her journey with mental health, I'm definitely on the learning side. There's so many things that I've learned, you know, even in, in coping, things as basic as working out, right? Going for a walk with a friend are just contributing. Rest is so important for mental health. And so I'm on this learning journey of like, okay, when am I taking a dip? When am I okay? You know, and also observing it in friends and supporting friends and family that I'm like, ah, this is a mental health issue. Things that we didn't grow up easily saying, you know, and me being able to engage in conversations with parents, with, uh, you know, friends and say, friend, have you thought Maybe this is the situation, this is what you're going through. And so thank you so much to everybody that's here, the different demographics as to us. We're all trying to learn about this thing. Anyone else can go. Um, and yes, you really don't have to clap um, after everybody says something. It is a two hour conversation. But yeah, the question still is, what does mental health mean to you? What is mental health? Um, to me, it's the ability to be able to decipher my emotions and understand that it's not going to be a one-way street where I'm going to get all the answers at once. Yeah. Um, it's a journey. It's being able to have uncomfortable conversations with yourself as well and to be able to understand that, hey, it's normal. Yeah. Um, there's nothing... You know, the stigma out there is crazy. And there's nothing abnormal about not being okay. And it can look different each and every day. So that's what it is to me. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you, because uh, I, I, I really love the way you articulated that. What, what exactly, what did you say? To be able to decipher my emotions. Yes. So, so it's taken me three years to distill this sentence, right? Of like what mental health is, because I feel like you know, do you, I don't know if anyone remembers when organic was a word, like, oh, it's so yeah. organic, and it's like, yes, okay, cool. Then basil was in, and then everyone was into coriander. Like, everyone goes through phases. Now, mental health is the thing that everybody's into. And I'm like, I don't... The conversation does need to exist. The word does need to exist in our zeitgeist, but it must, must, its importance mustn't be diminished. So, I want to talk about the metric for mental health. Like, what are we measuring it against, yeah. right? Because people are like, check on your friends, check, check on your mental health. Against what? Is there a scale? Are we standing on the, what's the BMI of mental health? What is the, the thing? So what I am offering in this project that I've, I have been developing for three years is offering the idea that self-awareness is the metric for mental health because how do you know how you are if you don't know who you are? Right? And I think that's why, you know, mental health in my older years where I was saying about how much I, I'm loving being older is because I really know who I am. So when I know who I am and something's off, yeah. then I know that I can make an adjustment. But when you're young and you don't know who you are and you don't have those guidelines, then how do you know that things aren't right? And that's when people lose the plot and that's when people get hurt and that's when people make bad decisions and look for solutions in places that hurt them. So, yeah, I, let's, I think self-discovery, the process of self-discovery, is the answer to checking on people's um, In my view as a clinician, I always wonder how much of privilege in terms of language allows us to name what we feel and what we then understand. So if I go down Tembisa, 
I go to Alex, I go to Kunu, I go to Mount for Eastern Cape and I ask what is mental health. We speak from a place of privilege because we have an understanding of naming things. And so in our community, what we then understand about mental health is mental illness. Yes. Right. So our description of what mental health is, is psychopathology, right? Um, you know, and all of that. And so you then wonder, where did we get this language of naming this? We know it from our reality, from our day-to-day -day interactions. Now, if you're going to talk about, I'm sad, how do you talk about sadness when the last thing we are worried about is, what are we going to eat? Yeah. <laughs> right? And suppose the, the, then the emotion that then comes is our understanding at that time when we are hungry is there's something I need to eat. I'll think about what I feel later. So I, I really want us to start from that positioning around languaging and naming for our people to understand what we mean when we talk mental health. So for me, we have health. You've got wellness and psychopathology. So ideally, we are so used to focusing on health and seeing it. Everyone knows what happens when you've got headache, there's grandpa, right? Ideally, you need to take- Dr. Cindy would disagree. Right? Dr. Right? Cindy would disagree. Oh yeah, Dr. Cindy is fine. Peace, Cindy. But that's the understanding, paracetamol is gonna take away that, right? For immediate relief. Talk about wellness. Maybe physical gym, and you can ask how many people are here on gym. <laughs> you get that? And then you've got the other side of psychopathology. So psychopathology is then not when understand when you when we describe insanity, it's either uloiwe, it's either amadlozi are dealing with you, right? But we never understand the biological understanding that there are some people who are genetically predisposed to having depression. Yeah. Without you doing anything, yeah. there are some bloodlines that have this genetic predisposition that they can have a psychotic disorder, they can have depression, they can have anxiety. And you ask yourself, how come in our family we struggle with this thing? And when you look back, it's a genetic predisposition. So where I'm, where I'm coming from is I think for us to be able to name things, with our youth today, we can name it because we understand it, we can feel it. But I wonder if this conversation lands differently in Tembisa and otherwise. Thank you so much for your piece. I, I, I want to maybe turn to you, Nia, and ask you, what does being okay look like? You know, I feel like we've defined what we think mental health means. And our professional over here has sort of broken it down for us piece by piece to be so that it's palatable to us, you know? Um, but what does being okay mean? What, or what does that look like for you? I don't think that being okay has to look one particular kind of way. I think for me, the most important thing about making sure that your mental health is okay, that your well-being is okay, is finding your peace and protecting your peace and doing everything it takes to protect your peace. So for me, I'm kind of like on this journey now where I'm like, what can I do every single day to make myself happy on that particular day, regardless of what happens in that day? So regardless of the things that I'm unable to change, what can I do to make myself happy today? Because what I don't like is being in um, a kind of a foul mood or being upset or being sad for too long. I've also got this now knowing, um, and I think that that's what mental health also means to me, this knowing that everything is going to be okay. Okay. eventually it might not be okay right now I'm sitting on the couch I'm crying because this guy is ghosting me it's sad I'm crying it's not fun but I know that it is going to be okay eventually right um, so I don't think that there's one way that being okay looks it's not going to be the same for everyone it's going to be a, it's gonna be different for everyone um, but what it is is that it is subjective so what do you do to make yourself feel okay? What is okay to you? And I think that that particular journey 
is going to take some time. Um, I think the other thing is that we, we tend to get very impatient with ourselves because we want things to be okay now. I want to feel okay now. I want to be in a better mental state now. Um, I want the situation to resolve itself right now. But that's not the reality, right? The reality is that it's going to take some time for you to get to where you need to be. And I think the biggest thing um, that I, I've learned very recently is that I also need to give myself some grace. Um, if I make a mistake, I need to acknowledge the fact that it is a mistake and I'm a human being and that's okay. What do we do with that mistake? We have conversations with ourselves, the difficult conversations with ourselves, and we try our best to move past yeah. it. I, I, I must agree. I think what you're saying ties quite well with what Pearl mentioned earlier on with, um, you know, deciphering your emotions. I feel like being okay personally, what that looks like for me is the the response time between something happening to me and me not feeling guilt or shame or me just picking myself back up and continuing. That response time, I feel like that's such a, it's a good indicator of measuring where you are in terms of being okay or not, you know? Because we, we can wallow in sadness and wallow in that feeling of, you know, being depressed or whatever, but as soon as we really understand that, okay, this is something that's also going to be passing and it's like actualized in the moment and you continue taking the taking the knock but like still continuing, I think that would be a, a synopsis of how I would describe being okay. Um, but yeah, I feel like, yes, um, Anele? I don't want to respond to this on, on my capacity, one, being a man, um, because I think for us as men, when you're asking another man, how are you? I'm good, bro. I'm sharp, grandy. It ends there, right? So in my work, I've been constructions of how do we socialize socially competent men who are able to name and how you spoke for me suggests the, the beauty. Chances are you're in therapy, right? And what therapy does, it gives you the language and the space to know and all of that. But a number of us as young black men, particularly, we raise in a society, in a community that does not help us to understand the actual thing as emotion. So I think we need to stop gendering emotions and, and thinking that somewhat when you're asking a man how you're feeling, it's just gonna be a one word. So for me, being okay, has taken me a lot of work. One, being in therapy. I'm still in therapy, I'm a psychologist, right? But I am in therapy. Because beyond the work that I do for others, I need to be okay. So for me to be able to answer congruently so of how I'm feeling, there's an understanding that I've probably processed it, and you're gonna get the answer that you are asking for. But for an, a number of our young boys, it starts as actually when they fall, you actually ask them, how was it? What are you feeling from there? So I think for us to be able to respond to what an emotion is, we would be able then now to answer that question. How many of you ask your partners, how are you feeling? And what do you often get? I'm fine. I'm fine. Ishap, right? And I think- but do they know that they're not fine? They don't can, know. Can acknowledge that they are not okay? Do they understand? Acknowledgement will only come from an experience of feeling, right? So it goes back to what I said, a, a, an emotionally competent man, you, that man is in therapy. But the ordinary Tembisa, as an example, you need to really go deeper to access that emotion as to what exactly is it. I remember as, as, a, as a young boy, I used to have this thing that I used to feel and I discovered later that I had chronic childhood depression, right? So I, I used to have my s corner there, and whenever I'm sad, I would know what that corner would do for me. And, and then I then discovered later, oh, there's something called an emotion, I'm feeling sad. But where I come from, I'm a closer guy, right? You can't be sad. Funadon, Aukyanga, Auntie, have you eaten, you sorted, right? From there, that's when I, that for me to be able to understand an emotion, I had to be a clinical psychologist. And one of the things I used to be 
really grilled on in training was your levels of empathy are very low. It took me seven years of training to sit with someone and understand what an emotion feels and looks like. So I think in, in us trying to understand and unpack the construct of what does it mean to be okay, there's so much work we need to do for, for men. A lot of us are still little boys whom when you need to ask that little boy to come out, he's either he's traumatized, he's sad, he's even ashamed of giving you what this emotion feels and looks like. By the way, to the team, thanks for allowing me to be the only thorn amongst the roses. <laughs> Yesterday it was queer, my, it was Pride Day, right? Yeah, yeah. And for me being a gay man amongst women's spaces, I really appreciate it. Because there's something particular about how we position certain things. I mean, people would assume that because I'm gay, it must be automatic to be soft. It must be automatic to be crying and all of that. But trust so, me. Right, like my brain is like buzzing. <laughs> Can I just bring this home, right? Realistically, as a young person in the workplace, if I speak up, what's going to happen to Girl. me? So, what, when I say let me bring this home, is when we, I love the hashtag, be the change. Let's focus on the, let's focus on the micros that we can do. That knock, knock, hey, baby, oh, cute shoes. On a scale of one to 10, how are we feeling today? Oh, girl, I'm feeling yeah, a bit of a four. Do you want to talk about it? Do you want to vent? Do you want advice? Do you want an ear for me to? Let's start with the micro, because with corporate South Africa, being a young black woman, ooh, yes. let's say, in the, in the legal <laughs> space, let me just put it out, in the legal space, it's very hard where the age gap, number one, plays to your detriment. Where you come in, you have these bright ideas and you have a way that you want to do things and that's also somehow going to play to your detriment. But I, I always say, let's start with the micro. Be that change. Within that circle, when we trauma dump and we trauma bond, especially when we trauma bond, mm -hmm. yeah. let's have that so, trauma bond. I want to say yes, let's do micro fine yes, and let's be that for each other as colleagues, as people that are professionals. But I want companies to start acting as well. Like, I want to have sick days that are mental health days. Like, why isn't that a policy? No, 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 but hear me out, right? Because we're talking about mental health, right? My functionality as a human being. If I'm, if I'm not able to function, like, I can't really do anything about it. You know what I mean? The fix does have... The fix has a mental health, and can we give them a round of applause? Right? It should be like, no, if, if, if I'm, you can't see my bruises, doesn't mean I'm not sick kind of thing, you know? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold the professional yeah, time, workspace time. one um, and keep it there, hold that thought. We are moving on to... The, the, the environment can be there, but then it's hard. My advice to you as the friend, it's not enough not to be tough, it's not about you, it's about the other individual. Yeah. So I think what you can do that has helped me is really educate myself on specific topics, then you'll be, it will create that empathetic feeling towards them to understand more as to what they're going through because as she said, a lot, she doesn't want to talk about it. A lot of people have a different ways of dealing with yeah. things um, and educating yourself with the current thing can really go a long way and create that empathy that you would need because tough love sometimes doesn't really doesn't help. Work, yeah. I, I want to say um, two things. Yeah, can, wait, wait, wait. Can we have Nina speak yeah, and people yeah. always look at your present state and try and make it make sense to yeah. them? Um, they yeah, it really doesn't matter. As long as you know your truth, you know your story, you know where you were from and where, how you got to where you are currently, it really doesn't matter what other people have to say. Because whether you got there because of pretty privilege or because of hard work, listen, they're going to say whatever that they want I to say. Try to make yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and to want you to please leave me alone. As friends, we need to give each other that grace as well.
and I'm um, always blown away by just the eloquence that you guys speak in and what you're passionate about. I love soaking in everything and learning from each and every one of you. And I will definitely be keeping in touch with your personal stories because I know here there's, there's rich knowledge here, right? I thank you each individually, but unfortunately don't have time. But that has been hashtag do what's right.